Hi guys, so I'm Melissa Love, and this is Elise Jackson, and we're grade 12 students at Colonel Byers Secondary School. We're gonna to talk to you today about how youth are involved with the environment. So, this is a picture of us loving the environment. <laughs> um, I look at the way the majority of our population lives today, and I think of how many different ways our system and lifestyles could be changed in order to greatly reduce the negative environmental impact that they have in our world. I care about solving these environmental issues. I love nature, I love to camp, and I want our future generations to have the same chance that I have to enjoy the nature. <laughs> My generation and the future generations will be the ones to live with the results of our actions, and I think that it's important to take a stand in solving these issues. I've taken part in a number of different environmental groups. This past fall, I attended Sea Day Fill the Hill um, rally on the Parliament Hill to show the government how many people really do care about the environmental issues and to say that there are many ways to make a community environmentally friendly without causing um, economy issues. I attended a conference called Power Shift Youth Conference where youth from around Canada got together to share and create ideas about solving the issues of climate change due to human pollution. Recently, I have joined the CR Youth Coalition Steering Committee, which gives high school students from the Ottawa and Hull area a chance to get together and discuss climate change issues in our school and beyond. Back in grade 10, I joined our school's environmental group, which is called FROG. This year, I've taken on the leadership role of co-leader with my friend, Rachel Law. Um, actually, Rachel and I were just interviewed, and we're going to be on the radio next week, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> so now I'd like to turn it over to Elise. Hi guys, um, as Melissa said, I'm Elise, and I became involved in the environment. I came to have an appreciation of nature through traveling with my family. We travel a lot, we go camping and canoeing and hiking, and just seeing the fragility and the diversity of nature has really opened my eyes to how important it is that we preserve the environment that we have today. And so, like Melissa, I've gotten involved in several environmental initiatives. I'm gonna to talk to you guys today about an expedition I went over on this, during the summer called Students on Ice to the Arctic. We went up there for two weeks. And since then, I've gotten involved in several environmental initiatives. I've become involved in FROG, which Melissa is leading. I went to the Power Shift Conference, also with Melissa, and I have been trying to spread the message of how vital it is that we end the climate crisis especially among youth, so I've given a presentation at my brother's school and intend to keep doing that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna talk to you, focus on the environmental group at my school. So as mentioned earlier, the name of the group is FROG, which stands for Friends Reaching Out for Greener Growth, um, and I'm a co-leading the group with my friend Rachel. Um, so at the beginning of the year, our focus was to increase awareness of environmental issues in our school and to raise participation in the group. So this year alone, we've had 70 students come out to our meetings, which is, I'm happy about. <laughs> Sometimes it's important to do simple things. With FROG, um, well, our school has 1,200 students, over 1,200 students. So like it or not, we produce a lot of waste. Uh, so FROG has launched an information campaign to promote the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. We have signs above the recycling bins. We have a board in our atrium and we make announcements on the PA system. It's basic, but it's needed. <laughs> another thing, another message which we like to promote is Lakoto, which means lights off, computers off, TVs off. There are signs up in the classrooms which reminds teachers and students to turn their lights, computers, and TVs off when they're not in use. <laughs> we have battery recycle bins in high traffic areas of the school set up for people to drop off old batteries. Soon, we're gonna start targeting cell phones and ink cartridges as well. And we want to get it kick-started with a competition between the grades to see which grade can bring in the most recycling of batteries and cell phones and ink cartridges. Um, the mascot of my school is a cougar. So we adopted a cougar from the World Wildlife Fund. We keep it chained up in the principal's, principal's office. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> um, every year, the, our group does a cleanup by the Ottawa River. Um, this year, it was a huge success. We had over 30 students come out on a sunny Saturday afternoon to pick garbage up along the river. This is essential because it keeps our community clean and it helps the health of the birds and the fish and the wildlife in the area. In the middle there with the white shirt is actually Rachel. She's the other co-leader of this group. So I just wanted to point her out because she can't be here today. Um, Okay, this is gonna be a big project. My wish is to get solar panels set up on the roof of our school to help with our sustainability and to make, 
to produce our own energy. This is going to be a huge project with a lot of money and we're going to need a lot of fundraising and sponsorships. I've run the idea by the vice principal and she thinks it's good and the group is all very enthusiastic and excited about it. So hopefully once we, once we get more information we can get the show on the road. So now I'm going to turn it over to Elise who will talk about her trip. <laughs> okay, so um, over the summer I went with an organization called Students on Ice up to the Arctic. We spent two weeks traveling on a ship around Baffin Island. Now Students on Ice is an organization which takes mainly high school age students to both poles, the Antarctic and the Arctic, every year just to show them, to allow them to observe firsthand how humans really are truly impacting the environment, especially in the polar regions. The changes that we notice there are much more pronounced than what we see here in Ottawa. So um, this is Ayuichuk National Park, which was one of the places we visited. It, yeah, it's pretty incredible. We, so every day we had lectures. There were 60 students from all over Canada and from the US and from Monaco. Um, they have students from all over the place. And 45 educators, all so knowledgeable in so many different areas. So we had lectures every day. We had them on the flora, the fauna, the glaciology, the sea ice, the ocean currents, the climate change issues. And we had a lot of presentations talking about how we can get involved and the things that are being done for the environment, like the COP15 meetings that actually start tomorrow, which, in case you don't know, is just a negotiation between all the countries that, uh, that have signed the Kyoto Protocol to try and negotiate a new protocol for once Kyoto runs out in 2012, I think. Um, so yeah, as well as having lectures, we also got out every day. Um, we went out on the zodiacs, we went out um, we got into the villages to talk to the elders. We went hiking. This here is actually us standing at the Arctic Circle after a 27-kilometer hike. Um, so yeah, a bunch of students actually up there next to me on the left is Ian Tamblin, the musician. In, if any of you know him, he's from, I think, the Chelsea area. So we had a huge diversity of people there. Also people like Ian, musicians and artists who tried to encourage us to express ourselves in any way we could. Um, this was actually just before we went swimming in the glacier-fed lake, just there, which was definitely an interesting experience. Um, so as I said, we got out on the zodiacs every day. Uh, we got out in the ice floes. We got to go and stand on the ice floes, I guess. That was when we truly defined ourselves as students on ice. And um, in this picture, I'm actually about 50 meters away from that polar bear, which was eating a seal. It was Truly, truly a mind-blowing experience. I've never seen anything like it. We also, like I said, we got to see a lot of the wildlife. We saw polar bears, we saw walrus, which weighed 2,800 pounds from 20 meters away in these little zodiacs. And we saw whales and birds and hundreds of thousands of birds. And it was just incredible. Um, yeah, so just some of the ice and stuff. Um, this was Kekaton Island, which was a whaling station that we also went to visit and just another reinforcement of how the humans have impacted the environment and there were still whale skulls there from hundreds of years ago. And this was in Frobisher Bay and just some of the amazing people I met. It was incredible to meet some of these students that, we, that were on the trip, the thing, to learn about the things that they have done in their own communities for the environment. My roommate, for example, who was just a year older than me, 18, has designed a new mechanism of solar panel to distribute in third world countries. And there was another girl there who had been trained by Al Gore to give climate change presentations. So just some examples of how much youth really do care about the environment. So I just have a quick video for you. It's just a kind of culmination of our experience just to try and show you what it was like because there are really no words to justify what we saw.
Yeah, actually that man that you saw there at the end, his name's Fred Roots. He's a geologist and he's 87 year old, years old and he's been on every single one of these students on ice expeditions. He went swimming in the Arctic Ocean. So that was pretty amazing and he went on a five kilometer hike and his famous comment was, someone asked him after this hike, you know, what are, you know, what are your knees saying now, Fred? And he said, they're saying I've done this before, so why am I doing it again? <laughs> but um, yeah, so and it was an incredible experience, really. But at the same time, there was a very shocking aspect to it. The, it was really saddening to see how we've impacted the environment there. I mean, you see all this ice, but uh, my first slide was of Took National Park. And you could only see remnants of these glaciers at the top of the mountains where even just five or 10 years ago when students on ice started going there, the glaciers filled the valley. It's really quite frightening how fast it's happening. And here in Ottawa and in Canada and the Western world, we see, something, we see climate change as something that is going to happen, that is happening in the future. But the truth is that it's happening now and it's really affecting them. Um, it was also interesting talking to the Inuit elders, the changes that they've seen in their lives and their in their lifetimes and the changes that they've had to make to their traditional lifestyle. One lady was saying that their hunters in their village can't get enough food because the ice is melting so they can no longer hunt the way they used to. So it was really saddening to see just how much this melt is happening and how much we are impacting the environment. So as you can see, Youth do care a lot about the environment, and we are taking initiative to make a difference. We are willing to assume responsibilities of our actions and try to right the wrongs of the past. Um, it is our future that is going to be affected by climate change and our generation that's going to have to deal with the consequences of the global warming that's happening. And we're willing to act, but we need everyone to help us. There are many things you can do on a personal scale or on a national scale. Of course, there are always small things like reducing, reusing, recycling, and getting efficient light bulbs. But we are at the stage now where we need something much bigger to be done. Even in your households, you can make huge changes. There are pl there's plenty of funding available to make your houses more sustainable. Just last week, actually, my family got solar hot water installed, and we received about half of the money back from the government in rebates. Um, buying local produce is also a great way to reduce carbon emissions and also helps to stimulate the local economy. The Copenhagen conference starts tomorrow. So getting governments to adopt environmentally friendly pol policies is vital. Creating and signing petitions, writing le letters to the MPs are all great ways to take political action. Um, and for any youth in the audience, um, pursuing a green career is also something that's really helpful. Both Melissa and I are considering it as career choices, starting university next year and stuff. And it's really a great way to make a difference. And it's a growing industry, and there's plenty of job opportunities. So finally, we just want to reinforce that climate change is happening now. It is not something that's coming in the future. It's an issue of today. Now is the time we need to act before the damage is done. Please help us to make a difference here so we can stop what's happening there. Thank you. <laughs>